It's Monday. It's December 19th. And the Oxford Languages Word of the Year for 2022 is Goblin Mode, which means a type of behavior which is unapologetically self-indulgent, lazy, slovenly, or greedy, typically in a way that rejects societal expectations. Used in a sentence, America is Europe on goblin mode. (laughs) I I originally suggested naming me in the definition, but they didn't want to offend goblins by association, so I I got caught. Inflation got so bad this year, the word of the year is two words long. I'm no illusions. (laughs) I'm Eli Bosnick. I'm Heath Enright. And broadcasting delayed from America's far center, we are the Skeptocrats. On this week's episode, we'll wrap up the year because we forgot to get you a Christmas present. We'll miss obvious topical references because we recorded this a week early. And we'll be doing all tea, all shade in Freud. <laughs> but first, the rest of the intro music. Joining me for headlines tonight are my fellow Skeptocrats, No Illusions, and Eli Bosnick. Gentlemen, it's our final episode of 2022. So um, let's get a little summary. How would you describe the year of 2022 in three words? Ooh. Oh, uh, Trump loses loserly. Ooh, I was going to go <laughs> nice. with weird. Not bad. <laughs> right. Interesting. Not bad is what you're going to say. Okay, no, there's some positive stuff, and we're going to get to it. So in the spirit of remembrance for this delightful, weird, but not bad year of our Lord, 2022, We're going to take a stroll down memory lane and talk about some of our favorite stories from the past year. And for me, that's going to be pretty much entirely embarrassment, sadness, and failure by Republicans. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. Okay. I know you're supposed to root for good things to happen with good people. I don't care. No. (laughs) If I'm being honest, I would rather have bad things happen to bad people if I had to pick one. By a lot, actually, if I'm being really, (laughs) really honest. That's in my heart. I hate them more than I like good people. I don't think... I hate them. All that being said, I am actually going to kick us off with one good one. And that would be... Katanji Brown Jackson. The oh, court yeah. is still fucked, but KBJ is great. We did a good thing. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, and as exciting as it is to break these barriers, things like first African-American woman to serve on the Supreme Court, also a stark reminder of how far we aren't from the civil rights movement, right? Yeah. And yeah. Ooh, and in a Skeptocrat exclusive, we are pleased to announce that she's already agreed to um, retire the fuck on time if the alternative is setting back human rights 50 years. So yeah. that's nice. Yeah. All right. I'm not going after RBG for not anticipating horrible Absolutely. cheating for the I'm first time ever, though. RBG. I'm, 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 okay. I'm after her. Look at me go. Yeah, they would have cheated for her, too, though, so it was just yeah. wouldn't have mattered. <laughs> All right. So I should probably spend a bunch of time talking about the many wonderful qualities of Katanji Brown Jackson. But far more important to me is how angry the Republicans got about those qualities and how badly those Republicans embarrassed themselves during her confirmation hearings. And the very clear winner for biggest embarrassment of human being during those hearings was Tedward Cruz. Yes. <laughs> and the competition was fierce for that title. So I'm going to start with Ted Cruz, a sitting U.S. senator asking Katanji Brown Jackson, one of the top legal scholars in our nation's history, he asked her, can I turn into an Asian end of question? (laughs) I'm pretty sure he was trying to bigot signal his transphobia there, the the opposite of virtue signal that. Ted Cruz, if you could turn into anything, you would have done it by now, we know, right? Like nobody would choose (laughs) to be Ted Cruz if like, fucking ice bridge was on the table sure yeah whatever you were gonna say there yep ice bridges help penguins their favorite porn stars don't explicitly tell them they hate them (laughs) lots of advantages (laughs) to being a porn star our ice bridge that's the best either and (laughs) against all odds uh, getting confused by the difference between race and gender identity was not even close to the dumbest thing from ted cruz and to be clear, he was actually pretending to get confused yeah. by that, which is even dumber and more right, evil. But yeah. still, not the dumbest thing he said, because he followed that up by pointing out that Katanji Brown Jackson is on the board of a school in Washington, D.C. that has a book in its curriculum called The Anti-Racist Baby. And then Ted Cruz said, 
Do you agree that babies are racist? And then we got the greatest sigh in American political history from Katanji Brown Jackson. It's written in the congressional record, yep. that sigh. And then there's a giant pause while she stares at him. And then a very reasonable answer comes out from her that she somehow managed without saying, the book doesn't claim newborn babies are racist, you dumb fuck. <laughs> she did not say that. I was very impressed. Also, side note, the book trended up to number one on the Amazon bestseller list the next day. It sure did. I Honestly, though, it might have been worth having to start over with a new nominee just so she could have said, I'm talking to a racist baby right now, aren't I? Aren't I? <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Oh my God! I want. Oh, we need a time machine. <laughs> yeah, that's so Think good. Think about it, though, man. In the multi worlds theory, there is a universe where she said mm -hmm. that. That, that yep. should make you. Happy. Uh, I want to go there now. Yeah. We all have hot dog fingers, but it's worth it. Trust me, it is worth <laughs> it. Everything, everywhere, just that, all at once is <laughs> all I want. That one, I just want that one thing all once. And I want hot dog time. fingers. And hot dog fingers, exactly. Sure. Snacky. Yeah, and uh, just for the record. A baby can be racist, too. Oh, yeah, I think that's sure. that's worth pointing out. I guarantee Ted Cruz has members of his constituency who own a KKK onesie for oh, their Jesus babies. Guaranteed. Christ, that would be adorable. <laughs> right? So, no, obviously, the little brain of the kid, it's not racist yet. But you see that kid and you're like, yeah, that's a fucking racist baby right there. That's a <laughs> racist baby. I'm looking at a racist baby. But... We still have not finished with the abject failure of Ted Cruz that week. And <laughs> this is my favorite part. He almost missed one of those confirmation hearings when his flight from Montana got delayed and he had a meltdown at the airport about it. He started yelling at the person behind the ticket counter and actually used the phrase, do you know who I am? Yes. They had to call security <laughs> to calm him down. And the best part, the airline person did not know who he was, yes. which made him fly into a rage even more. Oh. It well, was the greatest. Somebody got it on video. He's like, you you, what, you, 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 you mean I look like a blobfish dressed as Wolverine for nothing? I could have been a fucking <laughs> ice bridge here. Yeah. I don't really understand Ted's angle here, because if I was Ted Cruz and I found an airport gate that didn't recognize me, I'd take up residence like fucking Tom Hanks. I'd be psyched. <laughs> oh, chance to start over. <laughs> So nobody's ever said anything about how ugly my wife is, and then I've nominated them for president. Awesome. Okay, Jesus awesome. Christ. I'm going to go get something from Hudson News. Staying in <laughs> Bozeman forever. <laughs> yep. And uh, just one other piece of confirmation that Ted Cruz is hot garbage. Obviously, we don't need it. But it's a fun one because it shows my home city of New York in a wonderful, wonderful light. Ted Cruz went to a Yankees-Astros playoff game in October because uh, apparently he's a big Houston Astros fan, which yes. tracks perfectly <laughs> the right. biggest cheaters in the history <laughs> yes. of modern baseball. And near the end of the game, he turned away from the field and started waving into the stands like a royal to all his loyal <laughs> political fans in the Bronx that he thought he had. He was quite certain he had those. Uh -huh. And some journalist got a photo showing Everybody near him in the stadium, giving him the finger and clearly yelling at him, just yelling graphically sexual stuff, I would imagine, based on my experience in Yankee Stadium. Yeah, I mean, if we could have gotten him to stand still at the top of a subway escalator, which he also probably thinks is a good idea at the end of this, the whole Ted Cruz problem would have worked itself out there yeah. in the Bronx. Oh, uh, really? I'm sure he had like bodyguards because if he didn't, he is not here now today. That's correct. <laughs> and... The best guy in this photo is the Yankee fan two seats away from Ted Cruz. There's one seat between this guy and Ted Cruz. This guy is at full extension with the finger and the arm, just all the way out right next to Ted Cruz, clearly being like, hey, Ted, 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 Ted fuck your face, Ted, listen to me, Ted, fuck your face, fuck your face. It's the best. And Ted Cruz's one friend is in the seat between them. And this guy is trying so hard to pretend nothing is happening. <laughs> there's there's a New Yorker, an angry New Yorker with the drunk face, just his middle finger inside this friend's ear, just <laughs> screaming over and over. And Cruz's buddy is staring straight ahead like he's hiding from a velociraptor, just trying to pretend <sighs> this isn't happening. I've never been more proud 
to be from New York. <laughs> That's Jim so Kemper good. being Ted Cruz's friend, you piece of shit. Exactly. Oh, podcast listener, this photo, which Heath has, as always, included in our notes, is a Renaissance painting. It's I want weird. a bask of it on my bedroom wall. <laughs> right? All, all it needs is an angel making contact with Flip You Off Guy, and it is, it's perfect. Uh, when we get that time machine for everything everywhere, we'll, we'll go here, too. We'll, we'll also have Eli be involved in this painting. Yes, this beautiful New York moment. All right, on that note, we're going to take a quick break for a word from our sponsor, Policy Genius. It feels a little early for Christmas presents. I want to see your faces. I mean, I'll, right. I'll take an early gift. Oh, it's a it's a check from from Anna. That's right. Think of it as a kind of future IOU. IOUs are Future IOUs. But this one is good, thanks to life insurance from Policy Genius. What's Policy Genius? Policy Genius was built to modernize the life insurance industry. Their technology makes it easy to compare life insurance quotes from top companies like AIG and Prudential in just a few clicks to find your lowest price. With Policy Genius, you can find life insurance policies that start at just $17 per month for $500,000 of coverage, and Policy Genius has licensed agents who can help you find options that offer coverage in as little as a week and avoid unnecessary medical exams. They're not incentivized to recommend one insurer over another, so you can trust their guidance. There are no added fees, and your personal info is private. And with the life insurance I got from Policy Genius, Anna will be all set to make good on these IOUs. Your loved ones deserve a financial safety net, and you deserve a smarter way to find and buy it. Head to PolicyGenius.com or click on the link in the description to get your free life insurance quotes and see how much you could save. That's PolicyGenius.com. Nice. So uh, what did you guys get me? I mean, based on this IOU uh, poison? You shouldn't have. Yeah, no, that's what Andrew said. We're back. Next up in our year-end wrap-up, something cool that actually took place this month. But I think we'll actually probably end up being one of the biggest news items of the year, and that is... The AI revolution is upon us. Hide your vital fluids! What? I'm kidding. There's a cool new computer thing, and I want to tell okay. you about it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, cool new computer thing is called ChatGPT, and it was released quietly by the company... OpenAI earlier this month. Uh, now, you might already have heard of OpenAI uh, for one of their other products, Dali, which generates impressive, authentic-looking AI images, uh, unless you ask it to make a face. Mm, yeah. <laughs> yeah, not good with those. Apparently, the Dali software says, draw reality very, very effectively, except for faces which are Heath's personal nightmare. <laughs> I don't know how or why you program that, but they did. It's terrifying. It's like it's, the fucking I, kid from The Ring was like, okay, but I get to write six lines of code, though, okay? <laughs> God damn it, meow kid. You fucked everything up. Now, either way, the new program, ChatGBT, is basically uh, Siri on steroids. Uh, it can write essays, jokes, headlines, and copy in requested styles, like uh, old-timey cowboy, the King James Bible, or even noteworthy public figures like No Illusions. Though, to be fair, when I asked it to write a joke in the style of No, no Illusions in response to this paragraph, its response was, well, if ChatGPT is series on steroids, then I guess I'm an old-timey cowboy on some good old moonshine. <laughs> what? <laughs> Okay, you tried. Yeah, you tried. I do like the idea of new timey cowboys, though. Mm -hmm. Just like talking oh, about yeah. common core math and like microaggressions <laughs> and eating avocado toast. Well, yeah. So, but to be clear, if you haven't fucked with it, jokes are like the Dolly faces of Chat GPT, right? <laughs> right. Like yeah. a bunch of journalists and lawyers are looking at this thing and, oh shit, we might be in trouble. A bunch of satirists are looking at it and feeling like an old timey cowboy on some good old moonshine. <laughs> let me tell you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but that's not all. It can solve complex problems, develop step-by-step -step solutions with explanations along the way. And, and this is one of the coolest parts, it can write and debug code just from prompts. It can pretend to be a Linux terminal and then run the code that it writes for you. One reporter had it write code for a tic-tac-toe game, run it on itself, what? and then play itself in tic-tac-toe. 
Okay, and the AI was like, really, dude? I'm basically fucking Skynet. You want me to play a solved game? That we can- <laughs> That's so easy. And he's like, no, I'm trying to figure out how to get you to not nuke Russia in advance, just like so we know <laughs> up front. And by the way, to anybody born after 1985, that might as well have been the old-timey cowboy reference again. It's like, I got some good old I, I know. I, I felt really sad. The other day I was with friends, and I was like, well, if it asks you what flesh is, tell us that flesh lives forever, and I'll write you a bunch of love poems. And nobody I knew got it, and I was so <laughs> sad. I'm so sad and alone with my little Vonnegut reference. Yeah. So yeah. that brings me to... <laughs> To the inevitable Luddite freakout. Anna? Okay, she's recovering from surgery, but she would totally have put a jingle right there if she wasn't. Anyways, mm. there's a lot of people looking at this thing and talking about how it's going to take your jobs. And yeah, it's eventually going to eliminate some jobs, but not right away. And at the risk of summoning the skeptocrat curse, nobody you know is going to be fired and replaced with this AI. Ever. Instead, try to think of it like Google, right? In the time before Google or earlier search engines, there were services and products that filled those roles. There were telephone books and paper maps and porn you found in the woods. And yeah, Google has replaced those things, but it did so slowly and with time for the people who did those things to find other jobs. Okay, there's still porn in the woods, to be clear, if you look at it. Is there? But no, it's it's mostly not how we do it now. That's true. (laughs) Also... We want computers and robots to do human jobs. They do them better, first of all. And the shitty jobs, we definitely want them to do those. We just need to acknowledge that our fucking pre-industrial revolution labor paradigm doesn't exactly work anymore. Yeah, exactly. That's the key. The whole point of labor-saving devices is, get this, saving labor. Saving yeah. labor, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And look, the truth is this program, whatever it ends up being, is probably going to make your life better in ways that you can't imagine, right? Any more than you could imagine the usefulness of Google before you learned about that. And in the not distant future, this could be a supercharged version of Siri, or maybe it'll be a way to ask medical questions and treat illnesses without having to go to a doctor or spend any money. I mean, I can't imagine the possibilities any better than you can. But I can assure you that, like every other technology in human history, it will end up being sometimes bad, a lot bit weird, but mostly a good thing. That is, unless it turns to tell a solid dick joke, in which case we must kill it. We must kill it with fire. Yeah. Because no, there's exactly. some, thi- some things are sacred. <laughs> and in... It turns out liability isn't your aptitude with lying news. Uh, if the past year has had a plot... As I've already alluded to in my three-word summary, it's been Donald Trump losing at shit. So I, I thought it might be fun in this retrospective to go back through the calendar and look at all the various ways that he's redefined loserdom in the past year. Oh, uh, this is great. I'm just lubing up. I'm just lubing up. Let's <laughs> well, do this. Okay, so but here, so, sorry for the tease, but when I started, like, I started writing a list of all the things, and then that got really long and hard to keep track of, so I made a spreadsheet, um, and that got really long, so I broke the spreadsheet into, like, a political one and a legal one and a business one, right? All the different mm-hmm. losses. And then I had to cut the legal one into civil and criminal. <laughs> anyway, eventually it became clear that there's just not enough room on the show for an exhaustive list of Trump's failures in 2022. Uh, so I decided to just limit myself to the legal ones. And even then I don't have room for everything. Damn. I didn't even read an article for my stories this week. No, I just said yeah. things. No, I know, my, as you don't even listen to heart. the oral arguments. So I would also the spreadsheets are making it extra sexual for me, just to be clear. I feel <laughs> oh, like you okay. apologize. I'm I'm into a good spreadsheet. <laughs> you could so. you could ask Chat GPT for some formulas. Yeah, right. You know, you know how many mind. accountants have lost their jobs to those things, Heath? That's um, right. Ooh, do a pivot table. What the <laughs> fuck is Tony gonna do? Oh God, never mind. <laughs> Shut it down. I'm picturing Tony trying to do customer service and it's a horrible hellscape. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so so back to Trump's legal losses. Uh, and keep in mind that the, the year started with him under investigation at a state, federal, and congressional level. And while his legal woes are far from over, every one of those investigations got significantly worse for him over the year. Right? Say, say what you will about the Democratic Congress, but they nailed the shit out of the January 6th hearings. Right? There, there was no way to watch those hearings or even a half-ass objective summary of those hearings 
and still believe that Donald Trump didn't engage in an illegal, premeditated effort to overthrow the election and install himself as fucking America's God King or whatever. Like, like going into it, we knew that he held a rally that ended with him saying, now storm the Capitol, and the hearings made him look more culpable. <laughs> yeah. Right, like, like look, making Trump look guilty is a pretty easy test, but making him look more guilty than he makes himself look can be downright Herculean. Yeah, if the committee had just called him into the room and put a mic next to him, just sat it down, that might have been the best evidence. <laughs> yeah. He would have started shaking, and then he would have talked. Yep. But they did a good job without him. They yeah. Did. yeah. Uh -huh. They could have marshmallow tested him confessing to treason for <laughs> sure. Absolutely. Yeah. But as it was, I know a lot of people are uh, questioning why he didn't testify. Uh, he covered his eyes, and then Congress couldn't see him. So, you know, mm. outfoxed again. God damn it. Uh, but but in many ways, the congressional investigation was probably the least of his concerns. Uh, though he's been frustratingly slow about it, Merrick Garland has spent the past year investigating the same things and no doubt finding the same shit the January 6th committee found. And while Trump's dumbass thought he could press the snooze button on that investigation by declaring his candidacy for 2024 early, all that managed to do was convince Merrick Garland to appoint a special counsel, which he did in the form of one of the most aggressive prosecutors in the Justice Department. Yeah, I mean, not Texas executing a disabled person aggressive, but he's good. He's yeah, good. No, he's exactly. getting in there. Yeah. Vim and vigor. Now, of course, of the various criminal investigations into his attempt to overturn the election, the federal one was probably the least of his concerns uh, in terms of both his legal culpability and the prosecutor's desire to throw the fucking book at him. The top honor there has to go to Atlanta District Attorney Fonnie Willis, who is investigating his perfect phone call with Brian Kemp. <laughs> You know, the one where he said, I would like you to crime on my behalf in case any future grand jury is curious about that. You heard me say crime, right? Crime. I would like you to crime. <laughs> I'm going to spell for it me. for you. Say it back to me. I said crime. I don't know how crime? to spell crime. Crime. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And also, in terms of the House J6 committee, I need to mention the testimony of Cassidy Hutchinson, the White House aide that we got in, I think, July. We learned about the day that William Barr <laughs> announced publicly that the election of 2020 was a real thing and that the fraud claims were nonsense. And that's when Trump slapped away his sippy cup of Diet Coke in anger and then <laughs> and then it didn't spill because because of the design, which made him extra <laughs> mad. So he threw a plate full of his well-done steak and ketchup at the wall in a tantrum, and Hutchinson heard that happen and walked in and saw ketchup all over the wall. We also learned that Trump had another tantrum when the Secret Service wouldn't drive him to the Capitol riot while it was happening. And he lunged at the Secret Service driver yes. and... Probably got throat punched by his own detail. I think about that throat punch almost every day. Oh, see, now to me, I think about the guy with infamously tiny hands trying to strangle a Secret Service member who is actively driving him. That gets yes. me to my darkest <laughs> moments. Honestly, sometimes I feel like we could have just left the president alone with a choking hazard and saved ourselves a lot of hassle, a lot of community, a lot of stuff. Now, of course, of all the investigations into Trump, the criminal ones are probably the least of his concerns because, like, you know, let's face it, he's old enough that even life in prison is a pretty light sentence. Uh, it put another way, he has way the fuck more money than he has years, but a number of civil cases are putting that at risk as well. Uh, last week, or I guess two weeks ago by the time that you hear this, the, the Trump organization was convicted on multiple charges of criminal tax fraud for failing to report and pay taxes on compensation for top executives. Uh, Trump was not charged in that case, but something tells me he is a top executive. Um, he's also, though, facing a bunch of cases where he's personally liable, like the $250 million lawsuit that New York Attorney General Letitia James filed against him and his kids for that, all that same tax fraud shit, uh, which, by the way, is also still under criminal investigation by the Manhattan District Attorney's Office. Uh, Trump is also being sued by several of the Capitol Police that were injured in the riot that he caused, uh, by Michael Cohen for claims of retaliation, and by E. Jean Carroll for defamation in the form of denying her charges of rape against him. Yeah, basically he's in trouble for lying about all the crimes he thinks he got away with. Yeah, right, yeah, uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, but of all the lawsuits he's involved in right now, the ones initiated against him are probably the least of his concerns. Because let's face it, Trump's MO since the 80s has been to sue everything he doesn't like and hope for the best. But in 2022, his lawsuits haven't fared very well. In September, not. 
A judge tossed out Trump's suit against (laughs) Hillary Clinton, the Democratic National Committee, the FBI, Christopher Steele, and like everybody whose name he could scream before he passed out over the Russia probe. Um, He also filed a lawsuit against the New York Times, CNN, and his niece Mary Trump over the disclosure of some of his tax documents. Uh, And while Mary Trump might have to pay a fine or something for violating a settlement, his vendettas against CNN and the failing New York Times are going to have to live for another day, I'm afraid. Yeah. A a lot is going to depend on whether we terminate the Constitution of the United no, States. Fair. We'll see yeah. how it goes. Yeah. That determines a lot. <laughs> it feels like he's trying to rack up some kind of like Guinness record of lawsuit losses, but it also feels like he's cheating to inflate yeah. his score. Right? <laughs> Doesn't it? Uh, but of course, of all the legal issues surrounding the disclosure of his tax information, the ones about Mary Trump are probably the least of his concerns, because after a lengthy legal battle between him and the House Ways and Means Committee, the Supreme Court ultimately did side with Democrats. And as of November 30th, at least six years of his tax returns are in the hands of the democratically controlled Congressional Committee. And and of all the legal battles he's been facing, none has consistently terrified him more than people finding out what's in his fucking tax returns. So... Should be a fun 2023 on all fronts. Uh, and if that schadenfreude isn't quite enough to put your mind at ease, perhaps you need to hear from our other sponsor this week, BetterHelp. And that's when I'll be like, Ooga, booga, 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 Okay. No, I, I think you should go more with like a woo woo something Ooh, like that you, you know you know that is way better for crazy you're right yeah. hey guys guys what are you doing oh uh we're finding me a therapist Wait, with silly noises yeah i figured if i just stood in the center of the mall and acted crazy you know a therapist will find me no office visits no interviews i i mean eli if you want to take the hassle out of finding a therapist why not try better help What's better help? Last point of the year, baby. No, yeah. No, 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 it's not. They're still scathing. That's all pre-recorded. I will eat your face like a baboon. Yeah. Stop it. Yeah. Stop it. As the yeah. world's largest Stop therapy back. Stop service, better help has matched 3 million people with professionally licensed and vetted therapists available 100% online. Plus, it's yeah, affordable. Yeah, yeah. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to match with a therapist. If things aren't clicking, you can <laughs> easily switch to a new therapist anytime. It couldn't be simpler. No waiting rooms, no traffic, no endless searching for the right therapist. Learn more and save 10% off your first month at BetterHelp.com slash Skeptocrat. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Skeptocrat. BetterHelp, because all kinds of things can get out of hand. No, I'm trapped in a fold. You're going where even <laughs> God can't find you. And we're back. Next up. I'm going to list more delightful Republican failures. Fuck yeah. <laughs> and in 2022, we got a dedicated new category of that stuff called domestic terrorists go to jail for doing domestic terrorism. Mm-hmm. Now, obviously, we don't have everyone in jail that we want from the insurrection, but we do have some. And that includes Stuart Rhodes, the founder of the Oath Keepers. He got convicted of seditious conspiracy, and he's facing up to 20 years in prison for that crime wow. and up to 60 years total for all the other convictions, depending on how the sentencing goes. Oh, wah, wah. Turns out I cosplayed revolutionary on the floor of the Senate, and that just means I did the thing. Well, yeah. <laughs> right. So that's the thing is that not only are they going to jail, but they're going to jail for something so obviously and clearly useless. Right? Like, there's no possible success scenario for them. They're going to jail for a political temper tantrum. That's <laughs> awesome. For decades. It's yes. the best. <laughs> it's also very important to review a couple other details about Stuart Rhodes, since we're doing this kind of review thing. These are the highlights from any year, especially the one he gets convicted of federal crimes. So, first of all, he's a former firearms instructor that's important and the reason he has an eye patch is because he dropped a loaded gun and shot himself in the face (laughs) right in the eye he did Uh, also he looks like a nazi turnip so (laughs) that needs to be repeated (laughs) all the time does he looks like the the, like the bumbling bad guy from an 80s cartoon right like like if his arch (laughs) nemesis isn't a small mammal with a signature hat it seems like a wasted opportunity (laughs) yeah Yeah. Okay, now I'm picturing the episode of G.I. Joe where they, like, have to horrifically call him an ambulance because he shot his own eyeball. (laughs) Go, oh my God, are you? No, he is not okay. (laughs) Shit. Cobra, call 911. (laughs) 
<laughs> oh my just God. cuts to a PSA. Always put on the safety. The more you know. <laughs> He's a yeah. firearms instructor. <laughs> I'm gonna be. Turns sick. out this is the other half of the battle, actually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and while we're on the subject of the Capitol insurrection, we all need a quick reminder to watch the video of Josh Hawley doing a fucking fist pump for his pitchfork mob of terrorist supporters on his way in, and then minutes later, sprinting away from the same mob in a panic, <laughs> uh, like he said a slur word under his breath at a bar and somebody heard him and he was like, yeah. oh, no, 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 just kidding, I was just kidding, I'm leaving, I'm leaving. It's, it's a sprint that says, I really need to shit, but I don't want people to know I really need to shit. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he's he's tucking it in. He's prairie dog and he's <laughs> yeah. holding it. You can see it. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. And uh, that brings us to the saddest piece of art failure I think I may have ever seen. And Ooh. we talk about Christian cinema as a job, just to put that in perspective. <laughs> I was going to say. Of course, I'm talking about the performance art exhibit at CPAC Dallas in August. An actor sat inside a mock jail cell pretending to be a J6 rioter and weeping. And people got headphones to listen to the weeping. And the best part, the artist who made this thing was a defendant during the J6 investigation who ended up helping the FBI. Yeah. He narked on all his friends to get a plea deal that kept him out of a weepy jail cell and put those people into a weepy jail cell. Yeah. Also, seemed a tad incongruous in a conference whose theme could have otherwise been described as them kid cages were fine. They had Nintendos. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, just a couple other important events from 2022. We had the two year anniversary of Rudolph Giuliani giving a press conference from the back parking lot at Four Seasons Total <laughs> Landscaping next to the crematorium and the adult bookstore and he found out during that conference that every major news network had called the election for joe biden he found out during his talking no we never should have given heath access to a wrap-up episode i blame us i blame <laughs> and us. That, <laughs> brings <laughs> us, <laughs> that brings us to my final highlight Eli. i bet i can guess what it is <laughs> no list of great moments in history is complete without this one in 2022 we celebrated another extremely important Two year anniversary. <laughs> two years ago in August, Ben Shapiro's wife told him a wet vagina is a disease <laughs> and he believed her and he proudly announced it on Twitter. And it all happened after we got to hear Benjamin Shapiro perform his rendition of WAP or WAP. Yes, yeah, Telly Savalas uh, style. Yeah. It was <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And, uh, you know, just for posterity, uh, I'll do a little rendition. It went a little something. Like this. Whores in this house. There's some whores in this house. There's some whores in this house. There's some whores in this house. Yeah, you effin' with some wet ass P word. P word is female genitalia. Bring a bucket and a mop for this wet ass P word. Give me everything you got for this wet ass P word. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> Beautiful. Well Thank done. you. Well done. And in. I, I feel like it didn't make sense because there was no beat. Yeah, Could, exactly. Like, will, will you beat box a little bit real quick? I'll, I'll, we'll put it, I'll put it over it. Whores in this house, whores in this house, whores in this house, whores in this house. P word, every, 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 P -word. Every, every female genitalia, this house. P word. I'm Ben Shapiro. I know we have some talented musicians in our audience. And look, I'm not saying I'll give you $1,000 if you make that really good. But, <laughs> um, <laughs> Heath will. Heath will give you $1,000. <laughs> right, I do not have a thousand. I need to clarify right now. I do not have $1,000 to give you. And in 20 Stick It To Him news, if 2022 has been a year of anything, I, I like Noah's uh, Trump losing, but I think we can all agree it's also been a year of just desserts. Whether that be the anti-Semitic billionaire who halved his wealth to buy a social media website or the anti-Semitic billionaire who halved his wealth by saying words into a microphone. But I would argue that there's been nothing sweeter than watching the catastrophic fall of anti-Semitic almost billionaire Bill Hicks's nether ghost conspiracy <laughs> theorist Alex Jones. Cool. Yeah, maybe Dennis Leary can take over InfoWars and do the exact same material. That would be perfect. <laughs> I believe you meant negative billionaire, Eli. Um, honestly, the only way the Alex Jones news for this year could have been better 
is if the courts had sentenced him to be a gay fraud. Yep, that right? was this, they the had only that way power. to top it, yeah. <laughs> so if you don't know who Alex Jones is, uh, amazing? Stop the podcast? Take me with you to the beautiful world of innocence that you inhabit? But also, he's a conspiracy theorist nutbag who for years, and with seeming impunity, used his platform to spread dangerous misinformation, including the misinformation that the Sandy Hook massacre wasn't real. So this, in turn, caused his mentally ill listeners to terrorize the grieving families of dead children in an act so despicable that one has to invent supernatural punishments and timelines for it not to be justice, right? But since dick eaten by piranhas forever isn't a possibility till I guess that genie's riddle, being sued for more than a billion dollars in damages is gonna have to do. That's right. Take a moment, podcast listener, to remind yourself that however bad your year was, whatever trials and tribulations you've been through, a judge did not order you to pay your victims just over $1.4 billion in damages. (laughs) Also, he looks like a warthog dying of evil and sadness. Like Bebop from the Ninja Turtles dying somehow (laughs) of the evil that he... He's Borean Gray. Alex (laughs) Jones is Borean Gray. Yeah, he look he looks like Sleep Apnea's mascot. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh but that's not all. Uh Jones's counsel in these lawsuits was so <laughs> reprehensibly incompetent that Alex Jones hasn't even begun to feel the full extent of the consequences of his actions. Chief among those blunders was when his lawyers sent the entire contents of his cell phone including what we can assume is evidence of a lot of crimes. Two opposing counsel. Information that Alex Jones learned on the witness stand <laughs> at trial. <laughs> yep, that was fantastic. We also got an amazing moment when Alex Jones's fellow conspiracy liar professional and fellow defendant, Owen Schroyer, was in court. He was doing appearances on InfoWars with Jones during the civil case in Texas. And since both of them were parties in the suit, basic civil procedure rules say they're not allowed to discuss the case with each other. So after Schroyer was done with his testimony, Judge Maya Guerra Gamble asked, have you been discussing the trial with Alex Jones on InfoWars? Obviously, she knew the answer. And Schroyer said, I don't really recall if we talked about what happened in court. And then Gamble had such a great follow up. It actually made it into the opening arguments intro theme for a while. It was one of their intro quotes. She said, you think you talked about the trial without talking about what happened at the trial? (laughs) The the answer from Schroyer was, I'm not sure. (laughs) Uh, Yeah. And by the way, lest you think that phone thing doesn't matter or it's just like a funny mistake. What we know so far is that the contents of that phone are being reviewed by the January 6th Commission and the FBI. Mm-hmm. So uh may take a bit, but put a big old justice pin in that one. Yeah. No, it's kind of sad how many of our best 2022 stories are, and there might even be consequences next year. But still, yeah, no, yeah, good stuff. Yeah. <laughs> uh, one last thing about Jones's comeuppance. Uh, there are those who worry for a variety of reasons that Jones won't actually end up reaping what he's sown, right? That he can, like, declare bankruptcy or use state limitations on punitive damage. And the answer to both of those worries is no, he cannot do that. Any money that Alex Jones has access to has to go to the mo- people he owes money to. Earlier this year, he tried to buy like the slop buckets that he sells out of an LLC that he invented. And they were just like, nope, that's you in your LLC. Give that money to the people you owe it to. It's awesome. Now, obviously, there's one thing that would make this year perfect when it comes to Alex Jones. But you know what? I'm not even sure Alex Jones can afford a rope right now. So let's just take what we can get. Hope for a gay frog. We can afford one. (laughs) And finally tonight. Oh, I know what I want for Christmas. (laughs) (laughs) And finally tonight, in hijab opportunity news, whenever I'm slated to close things off on the Skeptocrat, I try to find something uplifting, right? So I I don't always succeed, but I always try. Uh, Like the thing with Alex Jones we were talking about. Well, yeah, no, it's hard to get more uplifting than Alex Jones weeping in distress, but there is Oh, I was thinking about the rope, but yeah. (laughs) 
Um, but there is actually one major story in 2022 that I think qualifies. Uh, now, it, it, it might not seem like it at first because it starts with a woman getting beaten to death for insufficient modesty. Uh, and, and then it continues not to seem uplifting because it goes on to involve months of civil unrest and at least one execution, though probably a lot fucking more. But based on what we're hearing now, it looks like the protests in Iran that began with the death of Masa Amini might have succeeded in abolishing Iran's notorious morality police. Cool, yeah. So now they just need to get rid of the secret morality police, yeah. and they're, they're looking good. Or, right? or maybe they get some actual morality police to get the old morality police. Yeah, This one's right, tricky. Yeah. This seems right. hard. <laughs> so no, so we actually haven't talked about this ongoing story very much. Um, Lucinda's talked about it a couple of times on This Week in Misogyny over on our sister show, The Skating Atheist, but we haven't covered it here. Uh, this story starts back in September when a 22-year-old woman named Masa Amini was visiting her family in Tehran and was arrested for improperly wearing a hijab. Not failing to wear a hijab, mind you, right? Just failing to wear it fucking hard enough or whatever. Anyway, she's taken into custody by Iran's notorious morality police, at which point eyewitnesses say that she's beaten. Later that day, she's taken to a hospital for reasons the government has never officially confirmed, and two days later, she dies. So, like I said, not exactly the typical open for a heartwarming story. I left a paragraph break here. Does anybody want to jump in with a <laughs> how, funny... how do you wear a hijab wrong? Was she wearing it, like, inside out, like Will Smith at, yeah, like, one the Bel Air Academy? It or yeah. something, yeah. I can I figure know. it out. If so, you let me at the next live show, I will show you how to improperly wear I don't, a hijab. I don't, I, don't think, I don't think we can do that. So, anyway, uh, on to the good news portion, uh, which is the fact that the whole fucking country erupted in protest over this. Uh, now, it's hardly the first time that we've seen Iranians erupt in protest. As recently as 2019, widespread protests were met with such brutal government retribution that they're now collectively referred to as Bloody November. Uh, but unlike those protests, these ones are calling for the straight-up end of the Islamic State. They started off as protests specifically against the morality police. They evolved into protests in favor of women's rights and then evolved again when people were like, hey, if we're doing rights anyway, what if we just did everybody's right now? Okay, they're going for the end of the Islamic State. What would they say Islam does there? <laughs> Just why have that? Oh, yeah. shit, a lot, actually. Man, oh, can we get Islam to do less, I guess, is yeah. the question. Right. Just pop back down. So, <laughs> now, so for their part, the government responded with internet blackouts, mass arrests, social media restrictions, tear gas, and at least one execution. Uh, Supreme Leader Ayatollah Ali Khamenei dismissed the protests as riots caused by foreign states and dissidents abroad. Uh, oh, and they killed people. They killed protesters. Uh, the number of people killed in the protests so far is hard to pin down because all the media restrictions. But the most credible estimate I've seen is well over 400 people, including at least 60 minors. Uh, a further 18,000 have been arrested, uh, though, again, the Iranian government disputes those numbers um, and are a bunch of fucking liars almost all the time. So factor that dispute in however you want to. <laughs> yeah. At a certain point, you've arrested your whole population and you got to face the fact that you're either the problem or a prison, Iran. <laughs> Yeah, right. Well, I've, the GOP will get back to you on that one, Eli. Yeah, but, that's fair, yeah. So, so, but now, finally, fucking 400 deaths, 18,000 arrests, and who knows how many people injured in clashes with the police later, we get to the good news. Because last weekend, Iranian Attorney General Mohammad Javad Montazeri announced that the morality police have been abolished. Um, and I, I should note that even that is, is still under dispute. Actually. Yeah, there it is. There it is. I was totally guessing earlier about the secret one, but <laughs> I probably guessed right. They yeah. have a fucking secret one. I'm right. Sure. Yeah. No. But so, so the morality police is is run under a different system than the one the AG heads, uh, and the theocratic government hasn't echoed his announcement. So there's there's probably still a ton of infighting going on about it, and and it may turn out that this is not the case. But it's looking more and more like at least in one instance, mass protests and civil unrest did get some police defunded. Man, I wish the U.S. had the same progressive reaction to protests as checks notes Iran. Yeah, Jesus Christ. And, and look, if the Iranian government had been willing to do this in like early October, might have been enough. Might have quelled the protests, but but they waited way too fucking long. They let the protests gain way too much men momentum, and it's very unlikely that this is going to dissuade protesters at this point. Uh, but the truly good news here isn't that they're abolishing the morality police. It's that there's so much internal dissent about it that it's spilling into the foreign press. That means there are cracks in an oppressive regime that has long needed to crack, and it's a damn good sign for 2023 if you're an Iranian, or I guess just a fan of human rights in general. Human rights. 
There we go. Right. Holding That's pattern. the opposite I I... of whatever they're chanting at the World Cup right now. <laughs> yeah, sure is. You're actually not allowed to chant human yeah. rights. The <laughs> no, world you're now, not, so. actually. Just focus on soccer. Say ole, assholes. <laughs> Unity. It's ole. It's pronounced ole. Fuck you. And on that Viva note, Zula. we're going to close it out. Thanks to No Illusions. Thanks to Eli Bosnick. And thanks to all the listeners who liked us on Facebook, followed us on Twitter or uh, Mastodon, and sent us feedback on the other various internets. Please keep doing that. Please keep listening, and please keep telling your friends. And if you find the naive stupidity of our giving away a free show business model to be oddly charming, please feel free to send us gifts of money at our donation page at patreon.com slash skeptocrat. Just like all the new generous donors, I will compliment that whole group next time around in the new year. Ooh-oh. And whether or not you're feeling financially benevolent like those fine people... If you enjoyed our brand of whimsy and you'd like to hear more dick jokes free of charge, check out our brother and sister shows, The Skating Atheist, God Awful Movies, d d Minus, and Citation Needed, available on Apple Music, Stitcher, all those other podcast apps, or the deep web. We just have one last thing. Let's compliment that penis. Special thanks to Ryan Slotnick of Evil Giraffes on Mars. He's the creator of the virtuosic musical stylings you heard today, which were used with permission. You should definitely check him out using the links we'll provide or by Googling the only band called Evil Giraffes on Mars. Until next time, catchphrase sign off. wet <laughs> what is happening <laughs> i mean eli's fat i think is it my fat yeah the preceding podcast is a production of puzzle and a thunderstorm llc copyright 2022 all rights reserved